Hello and welcome to program 85, which is based on some of the same techniques that uh, I did in tutorial 13, program 55 and program 84, essentially support and resistance levels. So let me just quickly go through how this program works. You can see some of the levels drawn on the chart at the moment, but at the end of the bar, the program checks for pivots. If it finds a pivot, it then looks at all the other pivots that have occurred, which have been stored in a vector called pivot vector and it checks to see if there are any of those levels that are within a um, certain proximity to the new pivot. Now the value it uses to check that is the combined value. So in other words the, the pivot, the historic pivot in this vector, we add the combined value, take away the combined value and in that range is the new pivot within that range. We create a new vector for the pivot that's just occurred. And we store in that the level, the, the date time, and also this thing called waiting. And if when we go through the pivot vector, which is the vector containing all of the previous pivots, we find that there is one that is close, then we add the weighting of the one that's stored in pivot vector to the line vector. And we keep on going through all the levels stored in this vector. And if there are any within a range or, or close to the uh, existing, the, the new pivot, then we add the weighting. So the combined value is this, how close does it need to be? Any vector, any value in the pivot vector that is close for which we do add a weighting to the new pivot, we set the weighting of that value, of that uh, entry to be zero. And then we go through the pivot vector, having having been through all of the values with our new pivot, then we, we go through the pivot vector and delete any with a weighting of zero. Then we go through the pivot vector one more time. And we do that looking for, to see if the new pivot is within trade proximity tolerance. So it it's, has the same meaning as combined value, but we're just using this in terms of whether we're gonna generate a trade. And you can see in this example here that I've got a higher value in the trade proximity, uh, proximity tolerance than the combined value. So we go through the vector. If we find one that is within that range, then we set a variable go long or go short to be true and we break out of the loop. We don't continue going through all the levels. And then finally, we add the line vector to pivot vector, line vector being this new vector we created for the new pivot. Oh, and there's just one final final thing when, uh, when we're setting the go long or go short to be true. We also at the same time check that the uh, the level the rather the weighting of this new pivot is above a certain value and that value i've called strength so in other words the uh, the weighting of this pivot would have to be above 5 before we would set go long or go short to be true and then we use the go long or go short if they are true and all the user filters are true then we would try and enter a trade. So incidentally, if um, the go long is set to true, if it is a low pivot and the go short, if it's a high pivot, I'll just show you in the program, the section for the user pivots, just simply it's set to true by default. But here's an example of a filter, which may or may not be a good filter in this case, but just to show you how you could create a filter and use it in one of these long or short filters. And of course you get with the, the uh, source code, you can change the program as well. And then finally trade management. I just did some very simple trade management using some trade station keywords, using uh, set stop loss, set profit target, set uh, dollar trading, and also this end of day exit time function. And I'm sure uh, they could be improved. Anyway, hopefully you'll find this uh, strategy component useful and it is available for download at markplex.com. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.